Welcome to Grit and Gravitas with Anne and Annie, bringing you savvy, spirited stories of success. We're excited to deliver 30 minutes of inspiration, impact, and goodness. We'll be bringing you guests and friends from around the country who have very special work and personal journeys. I'm Ann Dieter Gallagher, your co-host with Annie Carnathan, and this is Grit and Gravitas. Let's go. It's another day in the Grit and Gravitas podcast studio. It's uh, These are just days I look forward to, Annie Carnathan. Incredible excitement. And every guest has the grace to spend time with us. Powerful women leaders that I admire and respect. Uh, today, no exception. No exception. Time is non-renewable. We are super excited to welcome Leslie Ferraro, Chief Marketing Officer of Hershey Entertainment and Resorts. And for all our listeners, if you have never heard of Hershey, I'm not quite sure where you reside. So, (laughs) and I have not done my job. (laughs) (laughs) There, (laughs) touche, (laughs) touche. Leslie, welcome. We are so excited. You have an incredible story. You're a woman in high gear, absolutely. Um, And I'm just getting to know you. Annie obviously has a uh, longstanding relationship with you and has. Talked about you nonstop, so I'm I'm excited to hear more about your story. It's an incredible one, and it's it's on two fronts. And like Ann says, this is our show. So if we don't get through it, we're gonna you come back. Every guest we say you have to come back. Ann says we can do whatever we (laughs) want. So it's it's a labor of love, right? And this show is solely about saying to women in business: Here are the struggles we've had. Um, Here are the aspects that seemed career ending that were not remotely and probably better things came out of that for me. I want to start Leslie with the incredible, incredible decision on your part, the inner fortitude, the courage to leave PepsiCo as an executive. Wow. It's PepsiCo worldwide dominant brand to come to H E N R Hershey entertainment resorts. And you have fresh eyes and you have a way to lead. Mm -hmm. And whenever that size rock lands in a pond, tons of ripple. And bad. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And so I want to talk about what it means to build a new team, to earn whatever you're going to earn for your team to either lead, follow, or get out of the way. And what are some things the second you began that you thought, okay, these are my operating premises, my foundation that I just have to adhere to? Absolutely. So a little bit of, let's call it rewind before Mm -hmm. we go forward. Um, So I was uh, privileged enough to work with PepsiCo for over 15 plus years had a slew of different roles from sales. Um, Interesting part, I was never necessarily into marketing at that time. I spent a lot of time in operations, became a generalist, even though my education's in marketing. Um, Good news is I think everyone's a marketer. Yes. Everyone gives you a ton of opinions, whether you want them or not, (laughs) um, in everything you do. So the great news of PepsiCo is it allowed me to grow as a person and really figure out as a human and then as a woman who I want to be and what I want to stand for. And part of that was being able to lead different groups and being comfortable being uncomfortable. If you hear, that okay, is my there. number Being comfortable one. being Business vitamin right up front. It is. That, is. Her. that I mean, is. If you talk to most of my team members that I have worked with, and by the way, no one works for me. They all work with me. Great. And I think that has been a huge Great. pivot in what I believe really changes a leader from a manager. And part of that is just okay, bringing... that's another business vitamin. <laughs> well, it, minim- it min- minimizes the ego. Yeah. And, and the fact that, look, you're ultimately the boss, but you're not carrying a bat to say I'm the boss. Yeah. No. Right? You're part of this. And there's times you may need that bat, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, as long as there are team members who want to be around the table with you, you're going to build the best team possible. Mm-hmm. Um, So I had the privilege of working with PepsiCo, like I said, for 15 plus years, lots of different responsibilities, helped me grow, I believe, exponentially, um, just as a person. 
And what I realized is at that time, what do I want to do when I grow up? By the way, I still have no idea what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> You're in good um, company then. Yeah, because we're right? still trying to figure it out. And too. that's okay. As long as I can add value and right. do the best I can do every day and bring people along with me, I've had a really good day. And I think that's kind of a difference that has yeah. changed, I would even say, over the past decade in didn't necessarily need to chase the next role. Mm -hmm. It was all about what could I do to add value for mm -hmm. that day, for that time. Um, but the great news of PepsiCo is so many of the traits and responsibilities and the core competencies as a person were so transferable in my leap. Great. And it was a leap. It was. And it still is. I mean, I look around Hershey Entertainment Resorts and realize that I've been there seven years. It feels at times that I'm still the newbie. Because we have so many unbelievable legacy employees right. and we've done things certain ways and how do we change things? How do we have people look at things different ways? We have an unbelievable team right now and we'll talk a little bit, I think, about Good. how we Good. got to that. Yes. Absolutely. But but just therein, Leslie, you, you can talk about a new leader coming in. You can talk about change. You can per, You can look at persuading people. X amount of people when you came in were turtles, right? They just put their head back in their shell and thought, I'm going to wait this out. I'm going to stay below the radar. And you can't afford to have people. No, especially when what I am so proud of as a company locking arms and saying, here is who we are and where we're going to be. We have iconic brands that we need to protect every single day, which is always top of mind. We have a reputation that wants to stay at the very forefront of everything we do. But how do we grow? Mm -hmm. How do we really make this destination bigger and better than we've ever been before? And a lot of that had to do with, you know, our partner with UMI, mm -hmm. getting the right people in the right seats to understand our business and the connection right. of dots right. to be able to talk about it more fluently than maybe we did in the past. Came light years. Like for, for the changing landscape, I mean, you were that perfect person to push that. And the sales background to me, Leslie, sales is persuasion. And you're every bit selling your team on the vision. But I think the legacy is the blessing and the curse. Without a doubt. Um, it's what Mr. Hershey has provided us to be able to continue to mm -hmm. not only share with guests, partner with our sister company, the Hershey Company, work with Penn State, Milton Hershey, mm -hmm. Med Center. I mean, you, the foundation. There are so many inner ties that from the outside, I never realized that make this place one of the most special places. And I, yes, I'm being cheesy, um, but truly one of the most special places I've Passion ever been. Passion is central. I think ever it been. is. Your story, I don't know what Pepsi's story was. I know what FedEx's story, you know, their beginnings and and what they were founded from, what purpose or passion they had. But the Hershey story... And I love you saying, you know, your your responsibility to protect that reputation, uh, to grow it and make sure more people get to experience new memories and however that evolves. But it it is the story, you know, not just the roller coasters and, and the incredible entertainment opportunities, but it's what was his founding mission and vision. And imagine a vision being alive even stronger today. And it is. And the most important part is the Milton Hershey School. Right. So Children. at the end of the day, right, right. I get to, and it truly is, I get to show up every day for work and make sure that those children have a better step forward right. in any way possible, exactly. whether that is from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. whether it is hands-on touch points with our team members, that is something that you don't get anywhere else. No. And to watch that school grow exactly. and prosper, I mean, it's a genuine fabric of our legacy. Mm -hmm. And it is truly what Mr. Hershey left, which is fantastic. I mean, and well Leslie, done. some well of done. The, Bravo, and some of the most disadvantaged children. Period. Absolutely, and what they're doing to continue to grow, and how they are putting in early childhood education, mm -hmm. and really trying to ensure that they can touch with these, call it kids, yeah. early on right. to bring them along to have the best possibilities in their life. Oh yeah. Um, I just can't say enough for what that school is and what they continue to do. It's opportunity. And disadvantaged or no, we all need that. Absolutely. We all need someone to say, here's your opportunity. 
Yeah. And it's a continued opportunity for us as a company to ensure that people know that I'm not here to cause market. So just so my point here is not to go through all that, but at the end of the day, to tell a bit of our story because it is so genuine and different. And the tie to a CPG company, which in turn ties to an entertainment company, right. which in turn helps underprivileged kiddos, is unbelievable. But that's the emotional connection. It is. I mean, you can you know, we're it all is. in marketing and PR, we're all selling something, but that you don't have to sell that story. That when someone connects with that, then you know we want to support you. We want to see how how could we share that? How can we spread the mes- message of the Milton Hershey School and the opportunities afforded? And I know you know you still welcome children there. You're looking uh, to fill spots all the time. Absolutely. So that's great. Tell us a little bit about your new team and your pivot once you came to Hershey. So the pivot was, and I'm going to use the word interesting, because um, everything, and, and not in a bad way, Pepsi was act now, do it today, get results, right? So you were trained extremely well. We had an end in mind. We were, we are a publicly traded company. Yeah. And um, you found the best people and the best, they had great leaders and still have great leaders there. But pivoting to somewhere that had such a, call it community focus, mm-hmm. in turn, in tie with legacy and tie with moving forward into understanding how to be the best business as well Mm. is an interesting play. Um, And that was a big kind of step for me because I, I understood the business realm, but how do you put all the other things together? Um, So for someone like me who I believe runs a million miles per hour and (laughs) wants to do my best and try to get as much as I can done, coming here and kind of slowing down a bit and understanding that people and the team changes so much of what we do and the expectations and what you really believe in people Mm -hmm. um, help. And yes, we're a hospitality company, so you need to expect a lot out of your folks. But in the same sense, the expectations and how do you help us grow and who wants to grow with us was a good change. Good. And when you talk about the mission for disadvantaged children, Leslie, that's not manufactured authenticity because certainly marketing has a, 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 a reputation for sometimes overselling and not being authentic or that fake authenticity. I mean, that's what people are also voting with when they interact with the entire Hershey Entertainment and Resort ecosystem. And when you talk about teams, I mean, you're talking about People at the Hotel Hershey and in the lodge and and renting those rooms, people eating at the restaurants, people shopping in the gift shops, people, you know, coming to the park and... Going to the spa, to a Bears game, to a concert. To your point, the brands are so darn diverse. Which makes for diverse teams. Absolutely. And you're, you're the most prominent, you know, female executive leading that. And so when I look out and I could say... You know, here's the personality of the bears. Here's the personality of concerts. Here's a, you, you, you were thrown into the deep end of the ocean for all of that. And so my sense is, well, I know this, that, that, that not everyone can make the turn. And there's a cadence and a patience to that to the point where they're just not going to make the turn. You know, and what does that look like for every opportunity? And that's where I think women get the reputation for sharp elbows you know, for being blunt, for being not necessarily um, a negative thing, but it's perceived negatively. And so how, how did you navigate such an overwhelming, tremendously different culture with really sort of who's going to lead, follow, or get out of the way and who's just not going to make the turn? I started with seeking to understand, truly. Mm-hmm. That was so my number one first step. And-, and it was different for me. I'm not, and it was tough. Not because I don't want to listen, but it wasn't really how I moved forward in the first 15 You're years. You're action I listened, oriented. Yeah. But I was more action oriented. Right. Very well said. And having to just take a few steps back and understanding why things were the way they were or what is the background to it. When you're there 110 plus years, there's a lot of background. <laughs> and a lot of companies have that, but it's just was different. Yeah. Um, so that was a first step for me. Which so how long did that take you? You you gave yourself 
a month, six months, a year to settle in and truly understand the culture and the story? I would say a year, to two, a year to two years. Okay. That's a really good point because when I left, you know, the corporate world to, 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 to come to a sleepy family-owned business that was a powerhouse, right, but, but under the radar... I really, for the first two years, Leslie thought I have to give this two years, like, because I'd never thought probably in those two years that this was ever going to work out. That was actually my head. It was, I'm going to give this two years. And if not, I'll pivot as necessary. I'm going to be um, fine. But I have to at least yeah. provide that opportunity for myself and for the folks who have taken a chance on me. And your family who's uh, sacrificing absolutely. for a new job. And so everyone has a role in making you... But wanting to add value the first six months was where I got a little stumbled. Um, stumbled from the standpoint of, I didn't know what value meant yet, but I thought I did. Mm-hmm. And, didn't know what you didn't yeah, know. And making sure that I asked for a lot of feedback. Good. And I truly, it was more around understanding the why. And then being able to provide some different alternative suggestions on how to get there. Um, and then it was looking at the team, you know, and looking around the team. When I got there, the team's great. We had unbelievable results. Great. Just maybe moving in a different direction. Mm-hmm. So at that time as well, it's how do you become, in my biggest words, I keep using it as generalist. I am the mm-hmm. chief marketing officer. You ask me what I do, I tell anyone I'm a generalist. I'm the general manager of marketing. There is nothing that truly the title defines, in yeah. my opinion. You need to be so general in your thinking. And if you can be strong in your financial act, if you can mm-hmm. be strong in just the business itself, you have a seat at the table yeah, and you're wanted at the table. And that was a game changer f- for me. Talk a little bit about finding your voice at that table. Was that a challenge for you as, as you're, you know, surrounded by extremely influential people, probably mostly men? Mostly men. Okay. Um, and I'm very proud to say we are moving forward in different directions there. So, that, And that is a company step Good. forward, which is fantastic. Right. But yes, and that even is from my Pepsi days, Yeah. right? So what do you do as a woman to ensure that you have a seat around the table or a voice is to find commonalities, mm-hmm. right? So there are things that I have done for years and it is my get ready routine of listening to, I'll call it a podcast or my news download, flash updates to ensure that I have the most relevant information in a lot of different spans. Everything from ESPN Mm -hmm. to what is happening in football. to what is happening obviously in the news, you know, politics, what have you, not that I want to talk about all of it, but enough to be dangerous Mm -hmm. or informed is probably Mm -hmm. a better word. That way, regardless of the conversation, I was part of. And it wasn't because they weren't including me. I was included because I found my own voice. Well, when you look very confident, Annie and I have talked about this before, is that the onus is on us as well to raise our hand. Like no one knocks on my office door and says, hey, we got an open board seat. You have to put yourself up at that level, make it known, you know, that you are seeking, aspiring to either a C-level sweeter position or you have a voice and you want to share, whether that's on, you know, starting at a nonprofit board, starting, you know, at Absolutely. a bank board. Um, those opportunities generally don't come to you where you're shocked, you know. So I would encourage every female listener, young and old, to um, make your bucket list and, and put that on there. We all have a voice and and we we need to hear from each other. That's where diversity starts. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, some of the, they call it... I feel not luck, but really hard work that got to help me is not necessarily just an internal Mm -hmm. mentor, but an external mentor. And that word is so loose and almost cliche at times, but it's got to be organic. It's got to be somebody that you have that just connection with that if I call an Annie that I believe based on our relationship, not only is she call it a mentor in different portions of what I feel very strong her expertise is, but also in addition to, she's a sponsor of mine. And good, sponsors good. are really who help you in your yep. career. You can never have too many. To tell you the truth, Leslie, that, that tell you never. out of love, right? Out of the right place that sort of get, my, uh, for me, get my head straight. And you need that. Critical. You need the, yeah, you're, you're good at that. Well, you tell the I, truth. I, I depend I, on you to tell the truth. I want to help everyone. Uh, and that's, that's um, no pun intended, universal. And Leslie, in my darkest days in those first two years, t- to thine own self be true. I, you know, I have confidence, I have self-esteem, I know what I've gone through. And I thought, you know, at the end of this, I'm going to be, that word again, authentic. 
and I'm going to find the right commonality with people or I'm going to move on, which is fine. Mm -hmm. This happened Mm -hmm. for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. And that's where I think, you know, you and I talk about people not making the turn and find skill sets, just not applicable for either who we are, where we're going. You and that's know, okay. That's it exactly. Is okay. It's, it's, it's okay. There's another turn that they will make. And it's okay for you as a leader manager, right. and it's okay for them as a team member. Right. And as long as respect is always top of mind. Do it the right way. It's okay. Exactly. And you had to have had those dark days. Oh, absolutely. Where you're completely turned around. You say, well, I'll speak for me. What have I done? Right. And, and no one supported it. Like, like you have this career, you're doing what you're halfway through your career built up to this. You're, you're doing what have to do that. I'm not growing anymore. I'm not being stretched. I'm never going to get promoted. And so that sort of, again, inner fortitude and strength at, you know, love many, trust few, always row your own canoe comes down to you. 100%. And did that ever waver? Um, I am always, even from when I left grad school, uh, in the back of my mind has always been, you own your own career. I've heard it from day one and it's as true as anything gets. You own it. You need to find the right folks to help sponsor Mm -hmm. you and ask for feedback. Right. Because if you aren't open to it, you're not going to grow and be okay with it. Yeah. Um, it's a one way street. It is. It is. And it doesn't mean you have to agree with all the feedback, but it's a perception of that time mm-hmm. and how you put that all together and make a better holistic view of yourself. You're only going to have more folks, companies, boards right. want you around that table and want to follow you and want to put currency on what you have to say. You've earned it. Absolutely. And from the ground up. And so I just, with, with the time we have, this always goes so quickly, Leslie. So I look at, at COVID. I look at the largest capital <laughs> investment in the history of Hershey Entertainment and Resorts, the, the faith in your leadership team, the ability to go, ooh, ooh, okay, yeah, all right, we have to reinvent ourselves. We have to, to your point, wildly successful. But you have to keep, and you have to keep going. To, and the work that you put into that, the, the committees, the vision, the bill, I mean, extraordinary, which is almost like a, another full-time job for you and your 100%. team. 100%. And then, but boom, COVID fantastic. hits. It does. So four, five years in the making. Um, Hershey's Chocolate Town, to your point, largest expansion in our so company. So shortly after you came. Uh, we started... Just the planning stage, yeah. absolutely. It She's is. there seven years. So, no, but yeah, I mean, but so two, truly. three years oh, in, you're yeah, starting absolutely. this yes. four year yes. planning journey. We are, we yes. are, and a lot of changes along the way to where we ended up. Mm-hmm. But to have an expansion of 22 plus acres that has truly allowed us to deliver, in my opinion, on the expectation of our guests mm. and the legacy. Right. So now you enter to Hershey's Chocolate Town and we're telling our story. And there's a connection to the brand and right. to the man and to the Milton's company. ice cream shop. Absolutely. With Sundays the size of small children. <laughs> Milton's ice cream shop came from the inspiration of Mr. Hershey's first endeavor in Philadelphia, which was an ice cream parlor. Oh, wow. So how do we take some of those nods and bring it to life? And amplify the legacy itself. Confectionery Kitchen was his second. And then we're opening the Chocolatier uh, Memorial Day weekend, which will be an unbelievable um, 300-person restaurant that is absolutely themed with masterpieces from Hershey Park. Oh, my Um, God. It'll be unbelievable. Outside patio, bar. It's very exciting. And is that collaborative, Leslie? Like, who in the world is that clever to sit there and go deeper, 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 deeper? I'd love to say... It's all thought of from the start. But it's really connected. It, it evolved. It evolved. It evolved. So when we finally hit COVID and um, call it the quick dreams of mm-hmm. everything we've put into place were halted, you had to pivot fast. Yeah. And from our end, it was, oh my goodness, thank goodness we built Chocolate Town. Yeah. Because if we didn't have Chocolate Town last year, we wouldn't have had the infrastructure to be able to open. Wow. So At all. the only reason I bring that up is finding the good out of a really yep. tough situation. Yep. 
without having the new front gate and the ability to get guests safely through there yeah. that our team's done did a fantastic job of, we wouldn't have been able to open most likely last year. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of good that came out of it, even though it wasn't mm-hmm. the, you know, fireworks from the sky, ribbon cutting um, across the board. And the other great news is we have three new uh, experiences opening this year that without COVID would have all been one big bang last year. Right. So we're able to stretch it out and we're able to just take it a different step in a different direction. I was so impressed with you because your team just kept messaging your long game. Mm-hmm. And that this catastrophic event on so many levels um, was temporary, you know, and for someone to say, don't make a permanent decision versus a temporary time takes again, back to that inner fortitude and that strength and the ability to see the vision long-term after everything you put into that and extraordinary. And you opened and you were having Bigger days than Disney. And wow. you knew wow. what, what I said. You, you knew you were going to be under the microscope. We were. And we did a very good job, even though, yes, there may be other folks who may not think so. But unfortunately, we've done a really great job with social distancing, all the different metrics in place to ensure we could open at reduced capacity. Well, and that's um, so that's great, a, a qualifier that although some didn't think so, we can't put limiting factors on us. You you know what your long game is. And obviously your entire team pivoted to how can we make this happen? We're going to adhere with, you know, state and federal guidelines, but we have this tremendous opportunity to open and the community needs it. Tourists need it. We need to have fresh and air. We need to get out. You're right. And when we opened, our end in mind was how do you remain open all year? So if we wanted to go to the full what we were able to, it may not have allowed us to stay open all year right. because of just how everything was unfolding, not mm-hmm. what was in our control, but out of our yeah, control. No. You know, we've had team members who have had great relationships with just government leaders mm-hmm. and just helping us understand where we are. Great. Um, so it allowed us to move into a different direction. Again, I go back to that comfortable being uncomfortable. There were a lot of uncomfortable days, mm-hmm. a lot, um, a lot of tough decisions that needed to be made. And there were a few that were short term to in order to get us to call it July 1st of last year. But at the end of the day, our entire focus was on our team members, their health, their wellness, and their safety. And now it's pivoting always our team members, but bringing those guests back a bit fuller than we were last year. And it's back to that listening, Leslie, because you can't, again, you have to be authentic to be a good listener. And I, I mean, your team was talking to almost every external source you could think of to inform what opening, if you opened, looked like. And the behemoth behind the scenes for those logistics and, and, and I have to say, I was at the park and I was in Nathan's hot dog stand and <laughs> I essentially, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and someone, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking by and I did, I didn't, I didn't have it fully walked up, ma'am. Um, respectfully, we would just appreciate if you just lifted that up an inch and we're like, Oh my gosh, that's the nicest way anybody could ever tell you right, right. for your own safety, the safety of the well being, because then it was extremely volatile. Mm-hmm. Right. And I thought. Ooh, you know, they're not letting you walk by. And I felt better about that. But those are the details, I think, that make Hershey, the park, and the entire ecosystem one of the top brands in the country. It doesn't have to do with Fortune 100, 500. It is, people need to go there and go, this is who I thought they were. You know, and I did. We agree. We agree. So... You know, extraordinary job. Uh, we just got timed, so this is over already, which happens like. <laughs> so with every guest, Are you kidding Leslie, me? please right. come back. <laughs> wow, that we was just, fast. We didn't even get like, like uh, through the first, I feel like, first five minutes of all that we wanted to ask her. I'm, in, I'm enthralled by your journey, by your story, by the difficulty to just hang in there. When really most days, it's resilience, you, right? You had you, yes, it is. We it's talk grit, about that, and that's the you know first word in our show. It's grit, but I love that you guys just did it. 
It isn't that you were sidelined and, and paralyzed. You just figured out how. Are, so even the very biggest companies struggle with the same things that the small companies do. And sure. you gather the team and you listen. A lot of business nuggets in what Leslie has said today. <sighs> So we're going to have to go huh. through the transcript and write them all down. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And, and again, can't thank you enough. And when you look at your grit, it might not be as obvious. Your gravitas is when you walk in and change mm-hmm. a room. And mm-hmm. you have always done that. And to have that kind of grace and elegance, when I will say to people, I'm that pop-up clown that just keeps getting you punched. Are and, not. and all I have to do is <laughs> get up one more that time, right? <laughs> I figure, and, and, and look, it's a thousand paper That's cuts. I have hilarious. the scars, right? And so you, do you. Yeah. You don't look like, like you have any scars. Well, I have, I have them. And that's why the authenticity of you and what I know you endured, right? Until you could turn that corner to just a really, really strong team because no one can do it by themselves. You know, we need our teams. Could not agree more. And I think guests want to be part of your story. The the people that come to the park and and want to be entertained at concerts and want to eat, you know, or go to the spa, we love to be part of your story. We want an emotion. When we spend our money now, I think even now, post-COVID, we really want to spend it uh, with intention. With the connection. In the connection economy. There you go. Ian Gallagher. Um, Leslie Ferraro, do you, uh, can you share one piece? I know you've just said like 10. One piece of high gear advice for our listeners, and maybe they're just starting on their career. Maybe they're in college still, or maybe they're on ramping after off ramping, staying at home with children or caring for a parent. Any nugget, any Uh, new nugget? New nugget. That would be my uh, my largest one is being comfortable, be uh, be comfortable being uncomfortable. I live by it. I mean, it is my slogan. It is, I say it every day out of every side of my mouth. Um, The other one is, is to be relevant, right? So if you're put into a position and I don't necessarily mean a role, Mm -hmm. but into an environment where you're asked to be sat around a table, make sure you're known to be there. Be prepared. Be Be strong in your voice. So be there. I mean, it's all about relevancy. And that's part of stuff I, you know, even say to my kiddos. It's not about, hey, are you the best kiddo out there or whatever, right. or best student. It's are you relevant, right? And did mm-hmm. you put your best foot forward? And can you leave that and feel that you have left it on the table? And again, it's not about dying on the sword for something, right. but it's truly about just being relevant in the moment. And one last extension of that, because it's a whole other show, is... <laughs> You know, we're turning into an hour. (laughs) Yeah, and I I say this a lot is just you know here here's my my POV my point of view, and I am perfectly wonderfully one hundred percent okay if you don't agree with me. Mm -hmm. But I did provoke thought, and I did say, hey, there's this other side. Right when you respect someone, it's just important that you your voice is heard, that you're relevant, and and again, they may not agree with you. That's fine with me. I know that what I said you know, had value. It's all about the delivery, in my opinion. Yeah. All about it. And we say all the time, you know, at the end of the day, we pay people for their opinions. Yeah. You know, you have a role, but we pay people for their opinions. So it's the only way we're better. Good. Can't Leslie Farr, thank that. you so much. We Can't have just a little officer. lens into the Hershey Entertainment Resorts exec leadership. Here. Tremendous female leader. And, and thank just, you. Thanks for uh, having me. Watch this. Yeah. And so thank you for the time. Um, wow. And Dieter Gallagher. <laughs> it goes too fast. What a joy. All right, listeners, we hope you subscribe and listen and share. share. Help us. And we're creating a content library exactly uh, right. for all the young people ramping up in their careers. All right, ladies, it has been fabulous. Thank you. Thank have you. A, have a high gear day. Take care. Thanks for listening. It's our desire that these stories will bring energy, ideas, and fresh thinking that you can use today. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram and have a high gear day.